NATO claims it has intercepted at least 19 Russian military planes in the past 24 hours. The alliance describes it as an unusual level of air activity over European airspace. Reports of Russian bombers circling Europe come after a large-scale but eventually fruitless hunt for a phantom Russian submarine off the coast of Sweden. And uh, when a Russian make cargo plane lost contact with air traffic controllers in the UK on Wednesday, they said they would shoot it down. That reportedly was the voice of a Royal Air Force pilot from one of the fighter jets that went to intercept the plane. When the aircraft was grounded, it turned out to be Latvian. And it was on a routine flight carrying automotive equipment from Birmingham to Italy. Host of RT's Going on the Ground program of Sheen Rutansi says the fact that the plane was Russian-made overshadowed other details of the incident for the UK media. What a serious story this is, at least for the British press. I'm not sure whether it has anything to do with the launch of RT UK in the matter of hours, but the levels of paranoia about Russia are reaching fever pitch. An old Antonov uh, jet, as they are uh, keen to announce here, is Russian made. Uh, was only forced down by RAF to uh, tornadoes, no, typhoon jets. Uh, I mean, what is going on? Uh, the fact that this. Uh, had something to do with Latvia anyway, was ignored. The volume goes up on the propaganda. So uh, this, like the Dutch submarine or the Russian submarine, as uh, uh, we were told, was about to invade Sweden, it's um, difficult to imagine when you're outside the UK uh, what it must be, what it is here, uh, to be under this continuous onslaught that there is no doubt that any moment now Vladimir Putin is going to order an invasion of the United Kingdom. And the media is linking Russia to a NASA rocket explosion, too. Speculation is rife that Russian-made Soviet-era engines are to blame. A probe into why the craft burst into flames just after a liftoff has yet to deliver its results. The Russian maker of the engines used for the ill-fated supply rocket says its product is not to blame. The hardware was made decades ago, back in the Soviet times, and the company suggests changes made to the engine in the U.S. most likely led to the failure. But many media outlets are quick to pick up stories that point the finger at Russia. As our team's Nastasia Churkin in our reports. Good old Cold War rhetoric. You probably haven't missed it much because it seems to never have gone out of style. Unfortunately, we, we're really in a Cold War mentality uh, and the even suggestions that there's an axis of evil which consists of Russia, Iran and North Korea, which is ludicrous. But uh, that's the extreme uh, that uh, some in the Western media can go to. From NATO's new secretary general claiming that there's nothing but darkness and cold behind Russia's border to the U.S. president citing terror group ISIS, Ebola and Russia as the main threats to the world to the government of Sweden chasing an alleged intruder, a Russian submarine. Who hasn't spent 20 minutes in Ikea and immediately wanted to launch an attack on Sweden? Someone has to pay for what I'm going through here. An image of a tiny dot in a sea that surfaced to become absolutely nothing, forcing Sweden to end its hunt after a week of sleepless nights. No, 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 Sweden. That's not how it works. If you see a fuzzy photo of something, you let it consume you for the rest of your life. But of course, it's not just political incidents playing up to the anti-Russia mentality. The news media are always ready to join in, too. Take CNN's senior international correspondent, for example, making a mountain out of a molehill. These provocative T-shirts are just one light-hearted sign of what many in the West regard as a much darker trend in Russia. Or newspapers putting together articles such as this one, seven reasons why Russia is spying on its neighbors, based on cases that are yet to be built into factual ones. Allegations spun until there's no end in sight, while never checking double standards at home. 40% of Russians consider homosexuality a dangerous illness. But in the Vatican, it's more like 100%. 
Vulgar cliches seem to be the main building block to creating a stereotypical image of Russia. The Cold War mentality built up over the years um, because President Putin has been defending what he sees as Russian values and so on, which are different to those which are uh, accepted in the West, in Western Europe and North America. And while media outlets like CNN may suggest Russia is blind to its own flaws... The absence of criticism has become a fashion accessory. The presence of criticism of Russia, either baseless, lacking context or blown out of proportion to fit a convenient narrative for the West, seems to have become a way hotter fashion trend. Anastasia Cherkina, RT, Moscow.